Today we have uh, Patricio Misitrano from Sport House. Welcome to Paddle Smash Academy. And we are all things paddle. Welcome to the to the channel, Patricio. Well, thank you for having me. It's exciting to talk about paddle and everything that else is going on with us. Great. Let me let me ask one thing. Um, where are you located? Where is the club? Where is going to be located? And the size and all that. We have a warehouse that we are turning into an indoor country club with paddle courts, pickleball courts, and golf simulators in Norwalk, Connecticut. Norwalk is divided into a couple of different areas. One of them is South Norwalk, right on the water, probably an hour north of New York City, Manhattan. And the warehouse is 35,000 square feet. We have ceiling, ceiling heights that go from 22 to 24 feet high. So it's, it's pretty cool. There are not that many buildings that are that high. <laughs> yeah. And, and so that's, that's where the, you know, facility is going to be located. And we are literally about to break ground any day now. And we have to do some work inside, obviously doing, you know, installation of the courts. We're going to put all new lights that are going to be, we partner with someone who does a lot of and lights um, installations for sports facilities. And, and then what we're going to do <clears throat> is install in locker rooms, bathrooms, new HVAC. So if it's super hot in the summer or if it's super cold in the winter, it's going to be climate controlled. And then we're doing some changes to the outside to add more parking. Now, uh, how many courts are you going to have? How many uh, paddle courts are you going to have? We are planning to have five paddle courts and four pickleball courts and two golf simulators we're using, which we think is, you know, top of the line Trackman golf simulators. They are, I, I tested them and they're pretty cool. So I'm excited about that too. Awesome. Uh, how far are you in the uh, construction part? I mean, have you got permits already or are you guys they, yeah so we, we we right now so we have all the permits to do whatever we need to to do and at the at the site both outside because we are reconfiguring the driveway and adding more parking and then also the inside everything has been approved and it took a while but but we're there and we are waiting on the last few bits from a few different contractors and once we got the you know the, the last the last few We'll sit down, we'll decide which ones we are going to work with, and then we're ready, ready to go. The, the The longer, believe it or not, the longer we wait to get the right bids, the more quality of contractors and the better pricing we're going to get. So we want to take a few extra days to decide. Now, and now, what's your time frame? When do you guys see, when's your grand opening, you know? And we don't have a specific date, but we think it's going to be later in the summer. <clears throat> There's really not that much and that we're going to be doing there. And a lot of the things can be done at the same time where there's work outside. We're going to be doing some work on the inside. The first thing that's the, the first things that we're going to do are the, any, anything that is in such as lights, like in the ceiling. And so once that's done, then we can start working on the floor, which we're going to do, you know, some, some nice things on, on the floor in between the courts. And we're going to have a pretty cool area for, you know, drinks and, and things like that. We're going to be able to sell and beer and wine and, and a few other alcoholic beverages. And we don't have space for a kitchen, so there's not going to be any food prepared by us. But we're going to outsource that to, um, <clears throat> and you know, we're going to do some catering events and, and things like that. And then have some food trucks that are parking on the parking lot and, will manage our events that way. So I have to tell you, I'm from Connecticut as well. Uh, I came down here a few years ago, but I'm also constructing a, a paddle club there uh, in Weathersfield. So we're kind of at a race to see who has the first paddle club in <laughs> Connecticut. Okay, <laughs> we're right. also there trying to uh, get to around June, the same time. So uh, yeah, that, you're that's probably going to awesome. be a little bit earlier than us. And the way we see, all, you know, Padel, at least us, our group, is that we want more paddle courts to be built and more clubs to be built because we want the sport to grow. And even if we have a club that is right next door to us, 
it's going to give us the chance to create more leagues and then tournaments. Yeah. And we don't see it as competition. No. We're not there yet. The sport has to grow and grow and grow. So any other clubs that we see that are opening, it's, it's, it's good for the sport. I feel the same way. And I think we have to talk a little bit to try to work together to, uh, yeah, absolutely. to give some exposure to the sport. And that's why me and Julian are, are doing this. Yeah. Uh, but awesome. the other question would be, is, is how did you come up with building a paddle core in Connecticut? I mean, it's New England. I have my reasons, but I, I want to see what your reasons are. It's New England. Uh, you are going to do it indoors. There's not a lot of exposure and, and, you know, and knowledge of this sport. Uh, so what, you know, what made you think, okay, I'm going to open up a paddle court besides obviously the passion of it. And I may not look too old, but I grew up in the eighties and nineties playing padel in Argentina. And so that's my first, and, you know, connection with the sport, you know, born and, uh, and raised in Buenos Aires. I used to play every day and one of the partners. So the other three partners that I have in this, in this venture, one, his name is Juan Arraya, and Juan and I were the same age. We, when we were 15, we played in tournaments together in Buenos Aires. And I mean, we used to train tennis together and then we became friendly and we played um, some tournaments when we were 15. So that's our first connection to the sport. Both of my brothers in Argentina, they still play. Whenever I go back, I, I, I try to play. So that's my, my first connection with the sport. Then we have two other partners who are both um, in the rackets industry. One is also a director, Juan directs a club in, in Connecticut. And then Mark Parsons also, you know, great college player. He was one of the best college players when he was in college. And then one of the best platform tennis players, the same as Juan. And they're both starting to play a ton of um, paddle tournaments now these days. And we have the, the fourth partner who it's also in the rackets industry. Mark Fischel owns a club on Long Island, has been super involved with platform tennis. And we all love paddle. And there's a, a court nearby at someone's house. And and we try to use it as much as we can. Well, you, ha Everyone you, have, you, you have to invite me. I'm in Connecticut. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm in Connecticut. Well, I have to go to New York. Not, it's, it's a not, paddle house. It's not, it's not my court. <laughs> so actually, I don't need... So the owner of this, this um, house, he has a house. And there's a paddle cord on it. Half the time, maybe more. He's not even there. But let, let, let me ask you, is that the famous Ron Botman? Yeah. That's oh Ron, my. Yeah. I play with him every day here. Now he's here in Kibiscane, so we get yeah. to play with him well, quite he'll often. He'll be here on Sunday. We are on a, on a WhatsApp group, and he's yes. like, okay, I'm going to be here on Sunday. He wants to play Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so I'm going to play with him on Monday. Exactly. He's leaving us. I mean, tomorrow we're doing actually the farewell uh, the, uh, lunch uh, with him and, and, and the whole group because he has another WhatsApp chat here. And yeah. he, he's super addicted to paddle and he's looking yes. forward to it. So Yeah. So, and you know, we all got involved. One, you know, from going to Miami, Don, he started playing again. And, and I, I, this is what we think is going to happen in our area. There are so many pros that we know in our area, which is Fairfield County in Connecticut and then Westchester County, New York. They are like, you know, side by side. And there are so many clubs in our area. I'm going to say a hundred, maybe there are more in a 30 to 40 mile radius. And everyone, especially on the pro side, all the, the teaching pros, they are dying to play. And all the people that we know are also dying to play. And there's a club in Brooklyn called Paddle House that opened up last summer. It's very hard. They have four courts. It's very hard to get a court time there. Yeah. So, I, actually, and, and, as a matter of fact, uh, this uh, couple of weekends ago, I did a, a paddle certification up in Orlando. And out of the 10 players that came to do the certification, eight were from Connecticut. You know, mm -hmm. Carl Levinette, uh, Macy Mediero, and they yep. fell in love with the sport. So they're really looking forward for you to open that club. They were actually telling me. And yeah. That's, and that's where I go. Uh, when I go to Connecticut, I go to Paddle House. I was there the first week they opened yep. in Santiago. And, and I'm always, you know, uh, in driving over there just to play. Um, it's a great, great course. Um, the They have their, and that's been the biggest, I think, issue is getting a building with a high enough ceilings, you know, in, in New England. And I, I tend to see them about 20 feet at, at the most. And do you, th do you think that's tall enough? 
I mean, because um, you're limited to types of lobs that you can do, or um, you know, in pass. Yeah, so the lobs you have to hit them perfect. They, if they are a little too high, then you hit the ceiling. If you hit them shallow but deep, then they hit the back wall. So <laughs> it is a little, you know, frustrating at times. But you know, sometimes that's what it is. Until there are not more places with a lot of different options for us to choose and say, I'm gonna go play here versus I'm gonna go play right. there. Right. It is what it is. The rules are the same for everyone. Uh, as long as nothing is, you know, so you have the ceiling, but if you have the all the ducts or the lights, they're not in the way, like making the, the clear area above the net even lower, then, you know, I think it's fine. And I, I rather play on a court that every once in a while I hit the, the ceiling than no court. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That, that, that's, that's the mentality. And let me ask one thing about the club. Let's talk about membership, cost of the of the courts and all that. How is it going to be that structure? So we are going to, and um, we're going to focus on, um, on on membership. We want to grow the membership. And the membership, there are a couple of different types of memberships. One for family, one for an individual. Most of the people, believe it or not, we have um, a ton of people already who signed up and paid an initiation fee. Initiation fee is a couple hundred dollars. And... So some of them and sign up as a family, most of them sign up as an individual because some of the people that are going to join our club or the ones who join are going to play some golf, some pickleball, some paddle. And then after you pay that initiation fee, there is a monthly fee of about $100. I think it's $105 for, for an individual. And then every time you go and play, then you're, you're um, paying for the court. The, the, the thing that we are going to do is also we're going to allow non-members to come and play, but only once a month because we want them to become members. And then we also want to control how many members are, we're going to have at the club because we heard from other clubs experiences that they accepted way too many members and then no one could book a court. So we don't, we don't want to go that route and we want to give members the benefits of for example, playing as many times as they want and playing in an in-house leagues. If you are not a member, you cannot play in our leagues, having priority on bookings, having priority on signups for tournaments, then being able to book an indoor seasonal court, which is a thing, you know, in, in the Northeast or indoor in indo at indoor clubs where you can have the same time at the same day for, you know, for a period of time. So there are a lot of different benefits from becoming a member. And, but we're still going to allow and we want people to come and walk through the door and then play. And just the, the booking window, pricing will be the same with the only difference of a guest fee for the day. Okay, Patricia. So it's a couple hundred dollars for initial uh, you know, uh, membership, then it's $1,200 a year as a member. Yes, correct? more or okay. less. Yeah. And so now how much for a member does it cost per hour? to to book a court you know so if you want to play paddle so the in peak time it's 120 for the court okay the off peak it's a hundred dollars for the court so you divide that by four so each player is paying 30 dollars for an hour or 25 so it's it's compared to what's going on in the area in terms of tennis or other you know paddle and clubs in the area it is it's cheaper you know, and, and we want people to come and play and we want the courts to be booked most of the time. And, and if we, you know, keep the prices like we have now, we think that people will come and, and play because we think they are relatively, I'm not going to say inexpensive, but, you know, they're affordable. Now, uh, how many members, what's your goal on members? How many members do you want? We don't, we don't have a specific number in mind. And it's a couple hundred. We're not there yet. And as we start operating, then we'll make some decisions based on where that limit is going to end up. And but like I said, if some you know if the members are complaining that there's no court time because they're already booked, then we know that we are at that limit or we might have to cut it. But we, we won't know until we, we start operating. All right, Patricia, I want to be a member <laughs> for sure. I'm <laughs> awesome. from Connecticut. <laughs> I'll reach out to you later on, okay? Well, I'll tell you what. So one of the things that we want to do is grow the sport, right? Yeah. So we created another membership for club professionals that is going to be $65 a month. 
which means one and what are the benefits you mean a club professional me uh, paddle coaches well or or pickleball so for yeah. that matter so anyone who's working at a club it could be a golf professional it doesn't matter someone who's working full time and teaches full time and they don't need to be at a country club they could be someone who's working at a private club so someone who does this you know for a living we want them to come and use our facility because we want to grow the sport especially on the paddle side we believe that if you came and then you're like oh i never played this i never played paddle i love it then you're going to go to your tennis club or to your whatever club and you're going to say hey come and check this place out so we want a lot of pros for that's one of the reasons the other one is We need pros who are going to be who be able to teach and coach. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if we don't include right them, <laughs> you got that deal there. <laughs> and we want we want to encourage the you know the, these tennis pros to come and play. So the the membership pricing for them is going to be a little discounted. So so it will be sixty five dollars, and then the pro will charge the lesson. Uh, will be allowed to teach a lesson there, or how does that work? So, in order, the, the ones who can teach lessons at our club have to be members. Okay. And yeah, so they'll basically will rent the court. They have to be certified. Okay. And have on-court liability, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. But then they can bring their own um, students. We don't know how many are going to take advantage of that, but it is one of the benefits of being a club professional, paying a discounted membership right when they join and then bring more folks to the door okay but let, let, let me just do the number so 65 a month now i'm paying 120 a hundred dollars for a court time right if i bring one person so that person for me to make a profit as a tennis professional i have to charge plus a hundred dollars whatever 150 so i make 50 bucks That's we, we have we have some discounted rate for club professionals okay interesting yeah I mean, that will be great for all the teaching pros and all the, you know, the, the tennis coaches that, that want to move into paddle for them to get their feet wet and all that. I think it's a very, very yeah, important. Yeah, I don't know. So, and we, we really don't know how it's going to work out. We think that the club professionals are going to come and play yeah. more than bring their own lessons. Yeah, but my question, are you going to have in-house coaches as well? Yes, we're okay, going to have so, two. And that will be a different deal or they will be... Yeah, no. They, and, so the, the, and I'm going to be one of them. I'm going to be the sort of the director slash general manager. We are sort of deciding on, on what the title is going to be. But I'm going to be doing some on-court teaching both for pickleball and paddle. And then we're going to have one more pro on staff. Great. So I'm assuming that their, your goal, I, Patricio, is is uh, those professionals are going. They know about paddle, so they're going to be uh, uh, bringing people in to play, right? That's kind of like the goal, right? For for those. Yeah. So you know, if we have, let's say, you come and join our club, and you're a club professional that teaches, you know, at whatever club, then you come and play. You're going to go back to your club, and you're going to say, "Hey, this place, this is so fun. Come and check it out." And you can either bring your own lessons if you want it, because you're a member and that's one of the benefits of being a club professional and a member at the same time. Or you'll just say, come and check it out. And then they come and they play on their own. Gotcha. gotcha. That, that would be us. Yeah. Su super interesting. I, I love that the structure for, for the pros to give me, you know, because clubs are very protective of their own membership and all that. But now you're opening a different door, which makes sense to promote the, the sport and make it grow. I mean, I think it's a very, very good idea. I love yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, I, I we've never seen this done in this way. And both Mark Parsons and Juan Araya, well, and Mark Fischel too, but Juan and Mark and myself, you know, we've been running clubs for combined between the three of us, I don't know, 60 years. And and we've been trying to nail like the structure of our club and some things might, might change, but we like where we are in terms of membership allowing non-members and what the benefits are for members or, or non-members and how we're going to run the structure of the club and because we want to we know the area but we also want to grow the sport and doing things like that we think that that's going to help us do both fantastic now uh, are you going to focus on trying to transition tennis players into into paddle players um is that is that kind of one of your strategies Well, and Juan and I, we run the local Westchester and Fairfield County Pickleball League. So we have about 2,000 players in our league. Wow. So a lot of those players play pickleball and a lot of those players play tennis and platform tennis. 
and, and golf too. So we think a lot of them will give it a try when they come. And a lot of the other platform tennis and tennis players who don't like pickleball or don't play pickleball are going to probably start on playing padel because they watch all these YouTube um, <laughs> you know, videos and they're like, oh, this is amazing. I can go out the door like, well, that's not that easy. <laughs> and, but but the, you know, the two things about padel and, and pickleball that I think have a little bit of an advantage versus tennis is that they are easier to learn. So we'll get a lot of good tennis players who right off the bat will be able to play. And if they had some experience playing platform tennis, the, the walls, the ball bounce is a little bit different than on the platform tennis side, but also, you know, it's going to be an easier transition for them. So we think that we're going to get some pickleball players that will try padel because they want to try it. And some tennis players and platform tennis players who will try padel because they also, you know, it's new, it's cool, and it's, you know, close, close to them. And there's no other place nearby. Yeah. The, the last paddle certification that, that, that I did, the eight players that they were from Connecticut or from the Northeast, they are platform tennis. And they picked it up so easily. It was incredible how easy they yes. picked it up. And, and they fell in love with it instantly. Yeah. And I mean, I know Carl and, and Macy, they're both going to play at our, our club. Yeah. They, and they, they already, I mean, they're both great, you know, platform tennis players. Macy way better than Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Macy just won nationals. And, but yeah, s someone who transitions from the platform tennis court to the paddle court is not that hard to understand. Yeah. And if you had a little bit of a tennis background, then actually makes it even easier because I, 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 I think that when you play paddle, you, you attack a lot more of the ball. You know, you're trying to win the point. When you play paddle from tennis, you really don't do too much of that. So it's a little bit of the fun that when you play paddle from tennis and points are too long, when you play paddle, you can actually do all the things that, you're, that you should not be doing on the platform tennis court. Gotcha. So platform tennis is a lot more defensive uh, and the points can um, last longer. Well, it's harder to win the points because the court... Even though the court is 30 by 60, very similar to the to the paddle court, the inbounds is 20, 20, uh, 20 by 44. I should know that, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's the same as the pickleball court. So you can miss out. So it's much harder to actually win points when the court is smaller. And plus, you, you can't hit it out by four, by three, right? You have to always keep it in play. Always inside of the cage. Yeah, always inside of the cage. Yeah. That's super exciting, man. I'm I'm really excited. And tell me, I know you played the senior paddle tour here in Orlando with Mark. Uh, results that were not very optimistic. So what happened there? I know I didn't. <laughs> no, and so you mean a paddle tournament? You play, you play at the Orlando senior uh, tournament, right or not? No, oh, I saw your name on it. No, then some somebody else is. Is, is, you know, using my name and playing. <laughs> no, no, to be honest, I wanted to play and, and I wanted to start playing some, some tournaments and, but it just didn't, didn't make sense for me to travel. And, and I've been fighting a little bit of a back and injury, nothing major, but I'm not in, in, I was in, in any condition to actually go and play a tournament, you know, match after match, but I do qualify for the 45s. For so, sure. So, yeah, so and, I, and I'm looking forward to playing some more tournaments. I want, I want to. I know we will host tournaments. The, the moment we open, we're going to start looking to host a lot of open tournaments and then senior tournaments uh, and juniors as well, too. And, but no, I, Juan, Juan and Mark, they just came from Las Vegas. They went to play in Las Vegas. They played there in the open. I think Mark went to Houston a couple of weeks ago. They they are the ones who are playing all the tournaments. Okay, so and and how did Juan and and Mark did in Las Vegas in the? Las they I think they lost in the first round and then they won all the other matches in the back draw. Back draws. I don't know. The the rankings are not updated too fast. I think Juan is maybe around in the top twenty or so. Yeah, he was training last year with the team that was planning to go to the, the world championships and yeah, also no, to, to the Pan American games, I think. The, yeah. So yeah. I did play a little bit with them and, and, but yeah, in the, in the age groups, I think that, well, definitely Juan and, and Mark, because they've been playing and they're very good players already. And I, I would like to participate in more tournaments and maybe one day, you know, play in the, in the seniors, the, the opens is, 
and I was asking them and Mark said, yeah, I probably can play maybe two sets, but then, you know, in a tournament it's hard because it's back to back to back. Yeah. But on the seniors, then at least everyone is the same age. So I, I love the vision and I love what you're doing in Connecticut. And, and, and that's part of the, you know, we, we are what, what we are the pioneers in paddle here in the U.S. Sadly, you know, the U.S. is lagging way behind compared to, to the rest of the world in paddle. Where do you see paddle going from here in the United States now with the Pro Paddle, paddle League, you know, uh, and all these new things happening? And I think paddle has a huge opportunity because now with, you know, everyone talking about pickleball, and a lot of tennis courts converting to pickleball. You have, in my mind, a lot of tennis players who are like, I'm never going to play pickleball. I don't like pickleball. So all those players, which are millions, I think they are the perfect candidates to play paddle. Yeah. And, and on the real estate side, I think that the issue with both pickleball and paddle is real estate. is because you need places where you can build courts. And pickleball is easier because, you know, th there's no uh, structure other than the net post and the lines and, you know, fence, four foot fence or whatever around it, then you have a pickleball court and you can even play on a tennis court. On the paddle side, there is more of an investment. If you have the site already done, if it's indoors, like, you know, that uh, in paddle and the, the, the place in, I think it's paddle club that they call it in Chicago. Chicago. I was, yeah. ju I was the just there. Of I just played there <laughs> last weekend. Um, so you, when you go to the Midwest or the Northeast, you can either play outside in the spring, summer, a little bit of the fall, or year round, you need an indoor facility. And the problem is real estate is expensive. So I think that's the biggest challenge that battle has is real estate. It's not yeah. finding the players. I think what, what is going on with the, you know, with the pro league and so many clubs that I, I, we hear in our area, there's about five clubs that are putting in one or two paddle courts. And in Philly, they're a little bit ahead of us. And there are more and more clubs that have courts. And, but it's going to continue to grow. I think the challenge is the real estate. I, th I think you're 100% correct. Uh, and I think getting on board the country clubs and start putting paddles for the exposure of the member, that's going to be a really huge, huge step forward because now you're introducing the, to, a, to a, you know, a permanent membership that has been there for years and years and introducing the sport will be ideal for, for us to make it grow. Yeah, I agree. So I think something we forgot to ask is what, what is the name of the club, number one? And number two, uh, do you see any other clubs you guys opening up in Connecticut or New England in, in the near future? Well, good question. See, I, I forgot. I, and so the name of the club, and it's not, you know, sports specific. We are calling it the Sports House, H-A-U-S, a little bit of um, German European flavor in the name, and and we are not, <laughs> and we are not, and you know, going to be sport specific. We might have the same sport, just like we have three different sports at our facility, and we might change based on where we are. We are looking at multiple sites throughout the the East Coast, and we are working with you know a group that is and uh, interested in open in opening multiple facilities with us. So we'll see where that goes. You know, it's not that easy to open a club. This is, I've been running clubs for a long time, but this is my first time. And it's our first time as a group creating everything from scratch. And, but we think we have a very good product that can be replicated in other areas. And, and after you get one off the ground, then you gain so much experience from the things that you did well and the things that you didn't. So we would already have done a lot of the things that we've done a little bit different. And, but, you know, that's part of the, of the process. We understand that. But yes, we are looking at some other locations from Florida to Massachusetts to, you know, the Midwest or looking at a few other places. I love, I love how you change your profile in LinkedIn from director of rackets to entrepreneur. I love that because now you're the learning you know, loop is getting bigger and bigger, right? You're learning quite a lot. Yeah, you know, I, I've been a director of rackets, but I, I've been so, sort of an entrepreneur for a while with Juan, like, you know, like I said earlier, we, well, it was his idea, but I started doing it with him. And we run the Pickable League in our area, about 2,000 players. We started a spring and platform tennis league this spring, just now. And then we have almost 300 players. 
We own Skull U. We manufacture pickleball paddles, platform tennis paddles, and paddle and rackets too. And we have a camp that we do, you know, platform tennis and pickleball camp with Juan, with Mark Parsons, one of the four partners. We run a, a comp- consulting firm called Tennis Pro Search. So I've been doing some of these things sort of on the side, but this is going to be, okay, we're all in, and this is what hopefully will pay the bills. That's, that's beautiful, man. I really love how that sounds. And, I'm, I'm, you know, we wish you the, all the best in the world, and I'm working Thank you. to help as much as possible and expose the club and, and make Paddle grow and, and take it to the next level. So that, right. that's Thank super, you. super excited for you guys. So we, when do we have a, a grand opening day? Do you know or you have no so idea yet? So, like, you know, we don't have a specific date. I think it's going to be sometime later in the summer. Okay. And sometime in August, July. We, we don't know. As, there's not that much construction per se. Like the courts, they're going to get installed within two weeks. The pickleball courts, there's no side work other than some minor, you know, patching of the, of the concrete and to make sure that is that is flat and so on that respect it's very you know quickly that we're going to get these things done once we have all the infrastructure like you know the lights the hvac the plumbing is done then some of these other things could be done at the same time and outside like the work in the parking lot and that's the first thing that is going to um start and, and in terms of grand opening, we're planning to have multiple soft openings, which is going to be at least one just for club professionals. So all the tennis, paddle, pickleball pros, they're going to come and play. And it's going to be like a fun, you know, social just, just for pros. And then we're thinking, we know a lot of people in the area, we're thinking that we're going to invite five or six clubs. So we know all the pros, they can invite all their members to come and play. And then we'll do that with a couple of different um, clubs in different dates. Perfect. And, and, and one of the things that I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, that you're building the courts with Mejor Set Ledab, right? That's yes, awesome. Mejor Set. And, you know, they are one of the, the I, I did a lot of research in terms of courts. They are definitely one of the, you know, top of the line companies in terms of quality. And, Correct. and there were others too that, you know, we were close to deciding. And, but there, I've known Baby Auguste for, you know, not for a long time. I, I met him when he was one of my tennis coaches in the nineties before <laughs> he decided to start playing paddle, you know, yeah. professionally. And, and he was great throughout the entire process. I've been in contact with him a bunch. Yeah. And, and we think that the product that they're going to give us is the absolute best. Yeah. Both yeah. on, on the side of the service that they provide and the installation and then the quality of the courts. We're gonna get full panoramic courts, five of them, and with the Mondo yeah, um, surface. Yeah. So, you know, everything we wanted to make it the top of the line and we think that they're going to, you know, to be the best yeah. partner for you, us. You, you made the right decision there because I know their products and it's outstanding, the, the, the paddle courts they do and, and you made the right decision there. I congratulate you on that. He, he's, he offered to come. So we'll see if he comes to one of our openings. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, another question. Are, are you guys partnering up with anybody uh, when it comes to products or, or uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of these uh, clubs are partnering up with, with big uh, companies, you know, that sell their products so and paddles? So it's, you know, we are talking to in a couple of companies, not only on the product side and not to sound cocky or anything, but, you know, product, we can get the product from pretty much anyone. So we're looking for a little bit more. And we want to make sure that our partnership is going to be not something that is, you know, short-sighted. We want to partner with someone that, you know, wants to grow with us and has the, the you know, the vision to then come with us to location number two, location number three, location number four, that is going to support our tournaments, it's going to support our events, it's going to support our staff. And we we are looking at some on the product side, like, you know, like some big brand names, but then we also have some other local businesses that want to partner with us. And and we're going to be offering from on-court, you know, signs in the back of the paddle courts to, you know, painting the, the side of the pickleball courts to and selling, well, selling, yeah, like, you know, to promoting in our newsletter, which has, almost 900 emails already from people who said, hey, I'm interested. 
which I think is pretty amazing that we almost have 900 emails from people from, from our area that signed up to receive information about the club. So we send, you know, a weekly newsletter that has information about what's coming up with the, you know, with the project. And then throughout the, the year, we're going to start promoting different types of events and programs. So selling some space on the newsletter, or doing some social media posts, doing, you know, on courts and signs. And so all of that is something that we're working on, but we haven't closed with anyone that we can disclose yet. We will soon. Excellent, man. That sounds great. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for you guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to go and visit you guys. Uh, yes. Yes. And, uh, both invited. Oh, thank <laughs> yes. you very much. Uh, but you well, should... he said you were going to join. So yes, definitely. I'm joining. <laughs> you too, probably. But I'm, I'm, I, I have still have a home in Connecticut, so and that property is there. So I go yeah. back in the summer. So I'm, I'm definitely going to join. All right, thank you, Patricia, for joining us. And guys, remember, uh, learn, play, and share. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Gracias, Patricio. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And remember, it's free 99. It doesn't cost you anything to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in to Paddle Smash Academy. We hope you'll find our videos informative, helpful in improving your game and learning all things paddle. So until next time, keep improving your game. And remember, learn, play, and share.